In chapters two and three, uh, we were learning about flows on a line, and so the equations were of the form x dot equals f of x, with x uh, an element of the real numbers. But um, we learned that in these kinds of systems, there can't be oscillation, and so we want a simple model of oscillation, and that simple mo model of oscillation is going to be switching from a flow on a line to a flow on a circle. So for a flow on a line, uh, here's the situation, here's our line. Um, and for flow on a circle, here's the situation. Uh, we're going to use the variable theta. Okay, and on the line, x was an element of r. And on the circle, theta is going to be uh, an element of the unit circle. It's going to be an element of s1. And we're going to restrict pi is less than theta uh, sorry, negative pi is less than theta is less than or equal to pi. So uh, we're going to need to define our vector field sort of carefully. We want um, negative pi and pi to knit up seamlessly. So if we have an equation, theta dot equals g of theta, um, we're going to need this equation to be single-valued. Uh, along this circle, and that means that um, it's going to have to be a periodic function uh, with a period of 2 pi in this formulation. So we're looking at an example, theta dot equals cosine theta, and the first thing that we want to know is that cosine of theta is equal to cosine of theta plus 2 pi, so we have the periodicity we were looking for. Uh, and then um, the next thing we want to do is just analyze this, recognizing that we now live on a circle. Um, so theta dot equals zero implies cosine theta equals zero. Um, and this happens at pi over two and um, three pi over two, which we're calling negative pi over two for the range that we selected. Uh, okay, so... Uh, we have fixed points here and here. I'm not committing to their stability yet. To think about their stability, uh, let's draw in some arrows. So when theta is zero, which occurs right here, since we're using the standard parameterization, um, zero, pi, negative pi. Uh, when theta is zero, cosine of zero is one. And so that's increasing. So I'm gonna draw an arrow in the correct direction. And um, when theta is negative pi or pi, cosine theta is uh, negative one. Um, so that means that the angle is decreasing and decreasing angle is actually this direction. So I'm gonna draw in that correct arrow. And so that tells us that this upper fixed point by a geometric argument is stable and um, the lower one is unstable. <clears throat> so, flow on this circle, if we start an initial condition in this region, we're going to flow towards this point uh, in this way, and if we start in this region, we're going to flow to that point um, in this way. And now I want to look at an example where we have a bifurcation occurring on, on the circle on S1, and so the example is theta dot equals r plus cosine theta, um, and so r plus cosine theta does equal r plus cosine of theta plus 2 pi. So we still have a periodic function. And now to analyze the bifurcation, let's make a plot. Theta, um, recall that we only care about negative pi to pi now, that we've checked that things are periodic. And um, our function, there's the cosine, and then there's r, and so when r is equal to zero, that's the situation we've seen up here with these two fixed points that are as far apart from each other as they can possibly be on the unit circle. Um, and as r increases, um, the fixed points move uh, this way, um, and as r continues to increase, uh, the fixed points will continue to move towards each other until they collide and disappear. So we can see that uh, the fixed points are closer, closer still, and when r is equal to one, 
um, the fixed points collide. So that is pushing the fixed points in this direction. To push the fixed points in the other direction, we would need to choose uh, the other value of r. So uh, both of these are saddle node bifurcations. And um, let's sketch the bifurcation diagram, r. Uh, we know we're going to care about negative 1 to 1, uh, and that beyond that there are no fixed points. Um, the fixed points are, when r is 0, they are unstable at negative pi over 2 and stable at uh, pi over 2. And they're going to move towards each other in this way. Uh, so we have two fixed points. And if the parameter dials this way, they disappear in a saddle node, and there are no fixed points. And if the parameter moves this way, they also disappear in a saddle node, and there are no fixed points. The right way to think about this simple model of an oscillator uh, is that theta is a phase. So this is an oscillator where we only have one piece of information, uh, and that's the phase. We don't have any amplitude information about this oscillator. If we had amplitude information as well, uh, that would be two pieces of information, and it would be a two-dimensional model. But we're looking at the simplest possible one-dimensional model of an oscillator, and that involved taking things from a line and just putting them on a circle. The simplest possible example of such an oscillator is just setting theta dot to be a constant, and, and then at the same time recognizing that um, theta and theta plus 2 pi should be considered to be identical. So in this case, theta will be equal to the constant, which we're going to call omega, times time plus some initial value. And this number is theta naught at time 0 and can get quite large. But we're just going to think of ourselves as going around the circle and around the circle. And so large numbers are have the same meaning uh, as they would mod 2 pi. Uh, what is the period of this oscillation? Uh, if we start at some point, let's say 0, well, when we return to the point, we're actually going to have value 2 pi. So um, we want to know how long it takes for the value to change by 2 pi. So theta it goes through 0 at time negative initial value over omega, and theta reaches 2 pi at time 2 pi over omega minus theta naught over omega. So the time difference uh, for this traversal of 2 pi is 2 pi over omega, and this is the period which, uh, of the oscillation, which we'll denote with a capital T. We can use this idea of uniform oscillators to, to examine the phase difference between two oscillators. So let's say theta 1 dot equals omega 1 and theta 2 dot equals omega 2. Um, so this first oscillator has phase theta 1, and the second oscillator has phase theta 2. We'll let phi be equal to theta 2 minus theta 1. This is the phase difference between the oscillators. And to have a differential equation for how phi evolves in time, the change in phi with respect to time is equal to the derivative of theta 2 minus the time derivative of theta 1. Um, and so this is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1. Um, and this is straightforward to solve. Phi is equal to omega 2 minus omega 1 times time um, plus the initial phase difference. And to think about phase difference, we can think of the example of hands on a clock, which is given as an exercise in the book. Um, at 12 o'clock, the hour hand and the minute hand are perfectly aligned. And the question is, what is the next time that they'll be perfectly aligned? Well, that's a phase difference problem. Uh, our initial condition is phi naught is 0 at time 0. And we want to figure out the next time that phi uh, maps to 0. Um, the hour hand takes 12 hours to go through 2 pi. So hour hand 2 pi in 12 hours. This is capital T. And the minute hand 
uh, goes through 2 pi in um, 1 hour. This is capital T. From these two values of capital T, uh, we're able to compute the two different omegas for the hour hand and the minute hand. And then um, we have a differential equation for the phase difference. And uh, we're starting at zero, and we're looking for phi to reach uh, 2 pi. This framework creates a straightforward way to think about this type of problem. So um, they'll come back together when phi minus phi naught is equal to 2 pi, and this occurs when t is equal to 2 pi over omega 2 minus omega 1, while this is equal to 1 over um, omega 1, omega 2 minus omega 1 over 2 pi, uh, which is itself equal to 1 over omega 2 over 2 pi minus omega 1 over 2 pi, uh, where omega 2 over 2 pi is 1 over t2, and omega 1 over 2 pi is 1 over t1. Um, so this is equal to 1 over 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. Um, that's a quite, quite straightforward number to compute for our example, um, since t2 is uh, 12 and t1 is 1, or vice versa. So we have 1 minus 1 twelfth, uh, which gives us um, 11 twelfths, so uh, we get 12 elevenths for the time where 12 elevenths is 12 elevenths of an hour, so it's one hour and um, one eleventh of an hour worth of minutes. Next time, uh, we'll look more at non-uniform oscillators. Uh, hopefully, it's clear how this simple 1D model for an oscillator can be very helpful in thinking about things like, like phase relationships between two oscillators.